Okay, good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's Board of Ed meeting. The date is Tuesday, January 8th, 2019, so Happy New Year. I would appreciate that you turn off your cell phones as this um, meeting is being recorded. So, Ellen, can you please do our roll call? Thank you, Chairperson Granato, and Happy New Year, everyone. Mr. Cassio? Mrs. Evans? Mrs. Fitzpatrick? Present. Mr. Healy? Here. Ms. McCurdy? Mr. Morris? Here. Mrs. Paradise? Present. Vice Chairperson Mr. Hill? Here. Chairperson Mrs. Granato? Present. And Weathersfield High School Student Representative Ms. Eden Fritz Aguilar? Here. Aguirre, excuse me. <laughs> All present. Thank you, Ellen. Okay, the board invites some of our incredible high school coraliers and their dynamic leader, Mr. Scott Rio, up to the front to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Come on up. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. And I think we're going to have you up in a few minutes. Right? We are. You guys can stay right up at the podium if you would. We're going to get right into the uh, staff student recognition. And uh, I had mentioned to the board over the course of uh, vacation that uh, our choral airs were featured in a uh, Liberty Bank Surprise Squad um, clip on Channel 3. So at this point in time, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Rio and our choral airs. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting us. Um, I, was, I was surprised to get a call from Nicole Nalepa. Um, and I was very happy to hear what she had to say. Um, one thing that she said about the Coral Airs was that um, they had been on the Better Connecticut show for the last eight years or so, and uh, people at the station apparently always talk about them and how professional they are in the studio, which is why they get invited back. Um, they get asked to sing something quick and then jump over to this and do a music bump for this and do a commercial, you know, music going into commercial or out of commercial. And, and they always do it and they're on, you know, they put the energy on and they're smiling. So uh, she said, you know, would you, would you mind doing uh, the surprise squad with us? We'd like to have you do this to surprise a man on the uh, Rocky Hill Weathersfield town line. So I said, sure, absolutely. At that time, of course, I had no idea that it was uh, the grandfather of one of our graduates. Uh, that was, I was a surprise that uh, hit one, you know, the, the day before, I think, when I got a phone call. And uh, the Coral Airs, by the way, have about 18 concerts and performances in December at different places, uh, from convalescent homes to the Wadsworth Athenaeum to First Church to uh, St. Joseph's Church in Pequannock. And they really represent uh, um, Weathersfield very well, I think. And then in January, we reintroduce them to their parents, which is very nice. <laughs> but I would also just like to thank our administrators, including Mr. Moore, um, for the help and the support that we get. Because, I mean, for example, the day of, our, of, our, uh, of, of this event, um, I, I had put in the field trip form. It didn't quite get through, because it takes a while to go through and get signed by 50 people, you know. And, and it wasn't done yet. And I said, Mr. Moore, you know, we're not done. And, and the response was, go ahead and teach your class. We'll take care of it. And uh, the next thing I knew, an hour, hour later, there was a bus. And, and our administration always does things here for our kids to make things happen for them. And that doesn't happen everywhere. And I just think we're very lucky. So thank you for that. And I'll just let them say a couple of things. Hello, I'm Katie Galusha. I'm one of the managers in, in Coralaires. And Coralaires has given me so much confidence through my years in high school and being a part of it. If you've asked me to speak here, I would kind of be very terrified. But we're here. And it has also given me the wonderful opportunity and privilege to brighten people's days through music. And sometimes you don't see how you have affected people's lives. But when we sang for Mr. Stefano, the per that was like the perfect example of why we love to do what we do. And we possibly made someone's day better, maybe even year, by simply singing to them. Music is a conversation. And we all strive as corollaries to give them, give every, oh, sorry, give everyone a compliment if, it, if that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Nathan Labby, and I'm the other manager of Coral Airs. 
Um, since Coral Layers is such a, like a closely knit group, there's only about 23 of us in total. I was never really much of a singer until I auditioned for Coral Layers. And throughout the past couple years, it's really shaped me into who I am today. I definitely wouldn't have been this invested into music and singing without my friends and now what I consider my family since they've helped me and, you know, music and stuff. <laughs> um, that's the power of music. It really has the potential to bring people closer. And in Mr. Stefano's case, bring the joy to those who sing and listen to their favorite songs. He sung a lot of Frank Sinatra with us, and we were able to sing along with him. <laughs> Kept singing and singing and singing, but he was very happy, and it made us happy to see him smile, especially since he's done so much for his community. Um, we have many concerts all throughout December. As Mr. Rio said, we have about 18. Um, but one of our favorites is always Moreland School, where we get to go to a little school in um, Hartford, and we get to sing to these little kids, and they're always so grateful, and their teachers love us, and it's always a good time. We never really get to give back to our community, so when we were given the opportunity to sing to Mr. Stefano and get, gather and get yet another opportunity to give back, um, we certainly jumped on it. Certainly an experience I won't forget, and I hope that Mr. Stefano is happy for what we were able to do with it, for him. Hey, thank you. Love those words, power of music. That was wonderful. It's the Liberty Bank Surprise Squad on Eyewitness News. Well, you know the saying, there are some things money cannot buy. Well, that certainly held true for this next story from the Liberty Bank Surprise Squad. Here's Channel 3's Nicole Nalepa. One night, uh, a friend of mine and I, we went to Goodwill in Rocky Hill, and we were checking out, and this gentleman came up to me and he said, hey, so can I sing you a song? And I said, absolutely. Like, that would be great. I faced it all, and I stood tall, and I did it my way. The I man began to sing Frank Sinatra's My Way to Deanna Hopkins, a song which held special meaning to her and her family. Immediately, I started to get a little teary-eyed because uh, my grandfather had passed away, and we had done his uh, celebration of life, and the song was in his video. I felt like it was meant to be, like it was a sign. Deanna said she wished she had caught the man's name. So she contacted the surprise squad in hopes that we could do a little more digging. But the case quickly solved itself after Deanna posted to two Weathersfield and Rocky Hill Facebook pages. These people were coming out of the woodwork saying, oh, he did the same thing to me, I know who he is. Of the many who saw Deanna's post was the granddaughter of the singer. I messaged her, I was like, hey, that's my papa. 83-year-old Michael Stefano of Rocky Hill. Uh, favorite song to sing? My way. Since Michael so generously gifts strangers with his songs, we had a perfect gift for him this Christmas. Are you guys ready to carol? Yes! Hi, Mr. Stefano. Well, how, how are, are you? Wait a minute. I brought some friends with me. I wanted to say thank you so much that day that you uh, sang to me. We arranged for the Weathersfield High School Corollaires to show up at Stefano's door. Christmas, bright this very minute. Michael and his wife Lois even welcomed us all inside their home, where the music continued. We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I never saw anything like this could ever happen to me. We even sung along to some of Michael's favorites. Yes, there were times. I'm sure you all knew. When I bit off more than I could chew. But through it all, when there was doubt, I ate it up and spit it out. Yes, I faced it all. And I stood tall, and I did it my way. In Rocky Hill, Nicole Nalepa, Channel 3 Eyewitness News.
Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> may, may I just say something? Sure. Mr. Go right ahead. Mr. Real, you have continued for years to motivate kids to sing and some of the most difficult kids you've got on those stages to sing. So I'm so happy you're still with us and still encouraging them the way you did many years ago and keep going forward with it. Thank you. <laughs> got Kevin to sing. Anyone else? Okay, thank you again. Thank you. Okay, next on tonight's agenda is the approval of the minutes of our regular Board of Ed meeting on December 11th, 2018. Are there any corrections? Okay, seeing none, may I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Abstain. Good, those minutes are approved. So noted. Is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? Please come on up to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you that we have a five minute limit. All right, moving on. Mr. Emmett, you have communications to share? I do, thank you, Mrs. Granado. Good evening, everyone, and happy new year to you all. Uh, a few items this evening. Uh, last night's town council meeting, auditors from Bloom Shapiro presented results from the annual financial audit. Auditors found uh, no significant deficiencies nor any material weaknesses in their examination of board finances, uh, federal and state grants, so certainly good news there. Uh, state of the town breakfast coming up uh, uh, next week with regard to uh, the uh, opening of the community. We anticipate hearing from Mayor Amy Mor Morin Bello. Interim Town Manager Kathy Bagley, Superintendent of Schools Michael Emmett, Economic Development Director Peter Gillespie, Board of Education Chairperson Bobby Granado, along with our elected state representatives. Uh, doors will open on January 17th at 7.45 a.m. for a full breakfast buffet. The program will begin at 8.30 a.m. If you visit the Weathersfield Chamber of Commerce um, website, tickets are available through January 15th. I want to make sure everyone is aware, specifically our parents here in Wethersfield, there is a cyber seminar for parents coming up. Uh, this is going to happen on Thursday, January 24th from 6.30 to 8 o'clock at Webb Elementary School. This is being sponsored by the Wethersfield Schools Parents Council, WSPC. Scott Driscoll of Internet Safety Concepts will provide tips and techniques for maintaining safety for children in the digital age. It is important to note that this presentation is geared for parents, not for students. I am happy to report that Mr. Driscoll has done student presentations this year at our schools uh, through the support of the Weathersfield uh, Creative Arts Council. Just an update with regard to budget development. Uh, development of our 2018-19 budget is currently in place. I will present to you the superintendent's proposed budget at the regularly scheduled board meeting here on February 12th. Uh, this will leave us a month of time to make any necessary adjustments prior to the board approval, which will be scheduled for March 12th at that Board of Ed meeting. This will allow us adequate time to transmit the Board of Ed approved budget to the council by March 15th as prescribed by charter. I'd like to uh, say welcome to Mr. Jonathan Kopp, our new principal at Webb Elementary School. Uh, he began his role officially on January 2nd. I also want to say many thanks to Margaret Zakay for stepping in and ensuring a smooth transition. We're currently working on filling our SDMS vacancy. We have interviews actually scheduled for this Thursday. Uh, at the next Board of Ed meeting, we'll have a couple of contracts coming before you for approval. Uh, both those contracts include the teachers and the nurses. One aspect of the teacher's contract that will impact the district is the addition of 15 additional minutes of instructional time daily. Uh, upon your approval of this contract, we'll work on the logistics of the schedule adjustment so that we can communicate this to parents and the community in advance, and that'll be for next year. With regard to shared services, uh, Paul Schoening has joined the town as the custodial maintenance supervisor. This happened back on December 17th. Uh, he's been on board for a few weeks now, and Paul's primary focus has been to get into schools, to meet with staff, and gain an understanding of immediate needs. On the IT side, we've completed interviews for the Instructional Supervisor of Technology and are currently consulting references for this position. This position will replace the vacancy created by the loss of our colleague, Keith Raffanello. 
Our next Board of Education meeting on January 22nd will be held at Silas Dean Middle School um, with the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. holiday on Monday the 21st. That pushes the council meeting out to the 22nd. While we'll be at Silas Dean Middle School, uh, I've already talked to Jim Sutton and Jim will be taping the meeting so we will get it up on our website even though it won't be live. Okay. And with that, that's communications. Thank you. Great. Any comments? Well, I would like to appeal to the parents to go out to that um, internet security um, forum because as Eden did go to one for the students, they are so informative and knowledge is power when it comes to knowing what your children are doing online. So that would be a great place to go that night. Any other comments? All right, we do have action items this evening. John Morris, can you read action item 6A for us? Sure thing. Did I find it? Move that the Weather Seal Board of Vacation approve the expenditure of $11,375 for pre referendum phase two project management oversight. Second. Okay. Um, is there any discussion? Michael. Yes, thank you, Mrs. Granato. This uh, portion of the phase two, this particular component, will involve Collier's providing us with space standard calculations, uh, which will be important for cost out of this project. They will also be responsible for schedule development of our long range 10 uh, year plan, including priorities. And most importantly, they will come up with the final numbers as to how much will this cost. Um, again, with this process in phase two, we're looking at three components. This would be the budget development and schedule development and space standard calculations from Collier's, <laughs> the due diligence component you'll vote on later, and as well as the scenarios. This is really where the rubber meets the road. Mm -hmm. This directly aligns to our strategic plan and developing our long range plan for the future. So with this particular component, Collier's will be coming up with the final budget total and we'll see where we shake out. Okay. Any questions? What's the timeline for this? Timeline for completion of phase two is approximately three to four months, all told. Okay, Diane? Do we, have we budgeted for this? I can't remember. Yeah, at this point in time, we have received funding back from the state for safety and security uh, grant from previous years. So Matt reports that we do have money in the budget to support this. Um, in addition to that, with the funding we've received back from the state, which is approximately $98,000, we expect we'll be able to send some to the 1% reserve for next year and have some reserves. Okay. All right, so let's take a vote then. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, motion 6A passes. Kevin, would you read motion 6B for us? Happy to uh, move that the Weathershield Board of Education approve the expenditure of $16,950 to Malone and McBroom as part of phase two of the district's long-range long school renovation replacement plan. Okay, thank you. Is there a discussion? There is, just uh, for the public's knowledge, this particular component of phase two involves our long-range scenario planning. This will get into the issue of can we reduce from five buildings to four? Can we build new or should we renovate as new? Mm -hmm. And um, what a redistricting plan would look like. Obviously, we do not want to move forward with a redistricting plan without a clear picture of where we want to go with construction. So this is a crucial component in terms of moving forward with this long range plan. What's the timeline for this one? Along the lines of Collier's, everything here is about three to four months. We expect the next one that comes before you will probably take a little bit less time. That's the due diligence piece. These will all happen together or are they sequential? They will happen together. Obviously what we'll need is we'll need Collier's to have some information from Malone McBroom. Malone McBroom will utilize some of the data that they've collected already in phase one. Obviously you know we already have the enrollment plan. So we've got that as a basis. We know full well with our enrollment looking very strong for the next 10 years. The idea of moving forward with this makes sense. In addition to that, we're also looking at this from a perspective of approximately 485 students per building. So we're going to look and see four sections per. That'll also um, assist us with developing what those space standards are. Anyone else for questions? All right, seeing none. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion 6B passes. Moving on to 6C, Chris, would you read it for us? Certainly, Madam Chair. I would move that the Weather Seal Board of Education approve the expenditure of $14,860 to Milana McGroom, the purpose of long range facilities planning due diligence as part of phase two of the district's long range school renovation and placement plan. Second. Any discussion? Uh, yes. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Uh, with a phase two due diligence component, what this will entail will be uh, Malone McBroom uh, doing research with regard to deed restrictions. Um, there is actually a component where they will have to uh, look at each potential site and look for any type of uh, protected nature, birds, insects of, of <laughs> the, uh, it's part of what has to be done. So, so just if I could jump in here. Mm -hmm. I'm a little familiar with that, but I won't tell the, the story. It's, it's too good to tell here, but uh, we'll put it this way. <laughs> An environmental impact study, is that what this, all in for 14,000? That's what The reason like. I say this is that, you know, assuming that we don't have a problem, but if there is some kind of migratory issue uh, that pop that we don't know about, just be aware, $14,000 does not pay for environmental impacts if it gets complicated. I think yeah. we all know that, but I just, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not trying to say that it's not going to yeah. happen, but I've been around these things, these in the private sector, and sometimes, you know, you'd be surprised what a sparrow can do. <laughs> uh, Very I'll fair point. Besides but tweeting. <laughs> it, it does happen, so I just think we need to always keep a jaundiced eye on that one, because uh, I think everything else you're talking about certainly could be covered in that number, mm -hmm. researching and title searching and all that, but the environmental thing can sometimes. Absolutely, and I think, you know, to build on your point, one of the sites that we're looking at certainly is Highcrest. Highcrest, as you know, borders wetlands, so that's going to be, you know, this particular phase is going to be critically important to find out if, you know, one of the things that we had dreamed about doing was to build a new Highcrest yeah. on, on that corner. We need to see if we have a big enough footprint. This particular phase, this component of the phase looks at that and says, do I have enough space to build the school? and will I encroach upon wetlands? So this is really part of, again, that due diligence piece yeah, up front. And, I, and, I just, and the only reason I raise this is not to be a, you know, a, a know it all about it, but I, I know, I would hope that when they put that number out there, they're being you know, realistic with us about, you know, we all know the, the magical of change orders, and, 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 I, and I know these are good engineers. I know, I, I, I think they're the best, but I just wanted to raise that mm -hmm. one alarm bell potentially, given okay. that sites we're looking at and some of the topography we already know about. Okay, thank you, Chris. Anyone else? Okay, we we'll have a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? 6C passes too. Well, tonight we have our first reading of policy in the 5,000s, 5,850 on transportation. Um, we'll vote at our next board meeting, so if you have any, any questions, please contact the policy chair, Chris Healy, Mac Azaka at the business office, or Michael, and we'll get that voted on next meeting. Any questions on that? Okay. All right, on Board of Ed meetings held, we had a meeting, a special Board of Ed meeting on January 4th, 2019. Elaine, can you speak to that for yes. us? Um, and this meeting, this meeting was held um, here at this no at the Stillman Building, and was the uh, was um, covering the subject of a student matter. So, mm -hmm. so I can say about that. Okay, um, we do have meetings scheduled. We have another special board of ed meeting on January fourteenth at six o'clock. Student Program and Services meeting on January 15th at 6.30 and a Wellness Committee on January 16th at 6 o'clock. That keeps us busy three days in a row. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Is there any unfinished business out there? Okay. All right. So we'll go on to our public comment. Is there anyone out in the audience who wishes to make a public comment? Come on up to the podium. State your name and address, and may I remind you, you have a five-minute limit. Okay. Are there any board comments? We can be fast. 
Okay. Well, I want to mention an important meeting um, that happened before the holiday break with Mark Dinaher, our career counselor, Michael Emmett, and myself, with Paul Murphy right before we went on this holiday break. Paul is a Wethersill resident and the executive director of ACM. And ACM is the aerospace component manufacturers and Paul spoke of the opportunities in the aerospace industry for our students because as he said the business in aerospace is booming and the boomers are retiring there are over 100 members to this ACM in the Connecticut Valley which is known as the aerospace alley we will continue to work with Paul and are moving to have an ACM member on our career advisory board this is a wonderful connection for our students as they pursue possible future careers. And I do hope that everyone had a great start there to their 2019. The board is working diligently on our resolutions. And as I stated in Dece December, we are determined to push for a 21st century system that readies our students with a 21st century curriculum. As we connect with modern industries and businesses, an important goal that we all have is to have our students ready for their time in the workforce. Businesses and industries, and they have spoken to us on this, want students who are open to learning and experimenting and not have a fear of failure. So the board, the administration, teachers, staff, and parents are all working to have successful 21st century citizens graduating from our system. Anyone else with comments before we go on to Eden, life at the high school. Go ahead. Thank you. Everything's good. We're going into the new year. Everyone's transitioning really well. And we've all come to the realization that midterms are upon us. Ooh, so we're all in a bit of a frenzy right now. But everything's going well so far. Great. It goes by fast, doesn't it? It really does. <laughs> OK, any other comments? Oh, this is fast tonight. All right, do I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? Second. Any, all in favor? Aye. Aye. No one's opposed and no absentees. All right, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all and good night. That's wow, 30 minutes. That may be a record. They're not all that way. <laughs> I said something. I got a presentation coming up also.